We've been working through lessons in Studio 5000. The first one we did was the basic bit instructions, such as they go look for a one, they go look for a zero. And a lot of you commented, Tim, why didn't you teach them about aliasing? And I kind of just kind of brushed it aside and kept getting it. And then we did timers and counters. And several of you last week are like, you're not teaching these folks right because you're not teaching them to set up their aliases first. Folks, I'm not a fan of aliasing. And I want to try to make a video objectively showing the pros and cons of aliases because unfortunately this is one of those dividing lines between technicians and engineers. And I know my last video that was technicians versus engineers, I really upset a lot of engineers. So I'm going to try to do this one gracefully. But for the most part, when you're programming, if you're a programmer of machines, you like aliasing. If, you're, uh, if you troubleshoot machines, if you maintain machines, you dislike aliasing. And, you know, my first thought for you is, you know, as a programmer, I get it. There is some convenience in aliasing. Don't worry. If you don't know what an alias is, I am going to show you how to do it because I don't want us to be afraid of it. But you're, you're developing a machine for probably, you know, maybe it takes three to six months, maybe a year. And a machine's life cycle is, you know, maybe 20 years. So while you may be gaining some ease of programming for yourself, is it at the sacrifice of the person who maintains the machine? I put out a post about the pros and cons of aliases and nothing was surprising. But really, I think John Toy nailed it down. Pros, attack can be named anything you want, anywhere you want. Cons, the same as above, but it can be done, but it was done by the last guy. And John's exactly right. Because, you know, when you write a program, you're very familiar with it. You're very familiar with the diagrams. You're very familiar with the process. So it can the alias name and everything will make a lot of sense to you. But when we come up on a machine that we're not familiar with, where we don't have diagrams. And I know I, I, my purest engineers right away are like, why wouldn't you have diagrams? And you know, it's, it's one of those things every week in class, you, you can tell the ones that have been in the field a while and you can tell the ones that have it because someone will inevitably ask, well, why wouldn't you have diagrams? And everybody else chuckles because they're like, yeah, we never have diagrams. So one, maybe we get called out to machine at two in the morning and the person who does have the diagrams works day shift or maybe they're, you know, on vacation. They've been locked away where, you know, make sure, you know, nothing happens to the diagrams. Or maybe, you know, it's been something that's been added onto a machine. And we have diagrams here, but there's a red line set of diagrams somewhere else that actually has it. Those are the kind of the issues that start to make it gray. There are two arguments that I think were, well, one was very valid and the other was very not valid about when are good times to use aliases. But I wanna at least give you some food for thought on both of them. First one was, well, what if you're developing a program and you don't know what your tags, or what your address is gonna be, or I'm sorry, what your physical IO is gonna be at? And maybe, I'm gonna talk about that one. We're actually gonna do an example of that one where I'm gonna show you how to create an alias. The other one was that it is just that um, we can use it instead of descriptions and not have to get worry about them getting lost, especially, you know, the older Studio 5000 where it didn't store documentation. Aliases are not a substitution for documentation. And we're going to walk through that one definitely because that's probably the biggest issue I see with aliases and that's what gives them a bad name with technicians. So the first argument is that, yeah, I could create my program before I know my actual inputs and my actual outputs. And let me just zoom in just a little bit on that. Well, yeah, zoom in just so that's clear. I mean, this is really basic, but yeah. Let's say this was our program. Then we could right click this, new, and just leave it as a Boolean tag for now and hit create. And then we could right click this one, new, and leave it as a Boolean tag, hit create, and continue developing our code until we find out later what our IO assignments are. 
And so what they're saying is we can now right-click this and we could edit input properties. And then, okay, now if you're looking to create an alias, you're back to that same creation dialog, only now you have an OK button down here instead of a Create button up here. But what an alias is, is under this type, we can select alias. And then directly beneath it, alias four, then we would go find local colon one colon I, and let's just say it's IO assignment was PT00 data. And then we could hit create on it. And yeah, we get a nice little description beneath it. And we could do the same over here. Now my counter to using alias in this situation is long term, us knowing that that's local colon one colon IPT zero zero dot data is more important than that convenience you had in that little bit of time of development. So why don't we just use the replace function? So instead of doing that, we could highlight I don't know or output I don't know. And we could go up here to search replace. And then we can hit our dialog box here local colon two colon O PT zero zero data. And we'll replace all. And that will replace all instances of it throughout the program. And now this definitely does need a description on it. Now my kind of counter to people that say that this is good enough for description is you're not backing into it the way you would if you're troubleshooting a machine. This is one of our trainers, and part of this exercise is you have to find these points out on your PLC. And so, yeah, I, I've got, you know, I've got an output module here, and I'm, I know that, you know, this contactor down here is controlled by this output module. Now, being unfamiliar with this, I have no idea what you may have named this output module or what you may have aliased this point. So from a troubleshooting perspective, the next thing I need is this IP address. And maybe it's written down. That's another one people tell me. It's usually written down on them. I mean, I've worked on thousands of machines. It's almost, the IP is almost never written down. But we could go up there here. Actually, we're going to hit the OK. And we're going to sort by name. And that'll bring us up to this one. So the 1734 AENT is 192.168.20.125. So all I can really do with that info I have now is go over into my IO configuration. And if we go down, then we mouse over them all. There's 192.168.20.125. And I know it's this output module. So I'm gonna use this piece to figure out its name. That's gonna be the control logics trainer, colon six, and then since it's output, colon O. So then we could do a little scroll in here. Actually, don't even have to scroll, it's right there. So control logics, colon six, colon O. And we hit the arrow by it, and I'll go ahead and bring this column in so we can see. And this program right here, well, if I can get that error to go in. There we go. And actually, I, I use this one to kind of talk about this is, well, which one is it? So in the end, these are all aliases, but this one is much easier to find than the rest of these. Now I get it. A lot of you are like, well, there's only eight points there, Tim. You can't guess through them. Well, okay, but imagine on your machine, you, this would scale way up. And so if we simply had a description there, then this would be much easier to find. And this is probably the number one thing I found in programs that are heavily alias is there's no descriptions on the actual IO points. We would have to hunt and peck through each one of these which I'll cross-reference the first one. And only now, and even then, it's not going to jump out at us. Only now we're going to realize, oh, this is safety out channel one. We're going to end up here. But you just made a huge roadblock for us to figure out which point we actually need to go to by not having a description or thinking that this alias is the substitute for having a description on this. Now going back to the poorly named aliases that John was alluding to, this is a Rosetta Stone program we do. Actually, it's the same program in ladder logic, function block, and structured text. And so if we go to the ladder logic version, 
and we go down and look at Runga Lavin, then we have start, which is an alias for local colon one colon IPT06, and we have stop, which is an alias for local colon one colon IPT07, and then we have motor running, which is a base tag. And arguably, this is fairly understandable. Now, if we go and look at the same thing in function block, this is where people start complaining. One, they're complaining about function blocks, but also they complain about aliases. It's from a troubleshooting perspective, when we look at the same rung in function block with a basic tag of stop and start, it's not really clear from a troubleshooting perspective what these are. Where is a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm just bringing up points. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's no, how are we supposed to know what this is? Well, I, you know, from a troubleshooting perspective, we probably do know what local colon 2 colon OPT07 that data is. But you don't get your alias information when you're looking in here. Now, you can make it show, but it never works. So pay attention here to start and ST motor running. And if we right click and we go to options, there are two boxes that are unchecked in function block, and I've never seen a program that I could actually check them in. We have show tag descriptions, and we have show tag alias information. And now, start or what? So you don't have a lot of situations where this is over top of each other. So what most people say is, well, if you're going to use this alias, you still got to give us the wire info in it somehow. And also similar with structured text. If we go down and we look at line 40, it's the same, or 42. And so we have start or motor running. There's no way to see the aliases here. Now a couple ways you can see them. We did have the right click and options over there. We don't have it over here, but we can mouse over them. And then we'd figure out if this is an alias, but also for my technicians, here's you know what I stressed you so hard, because you can't fully say, well, we can't use aliases. There was some benefit through here. We right-click ST motor, I'm sorry, we right-click start because we want to know what the world's writing to it. And we go to cross-reference, and usually we're looking for a Y. And here's what stumps people on them. A Y is something is writing to this. Well, we have no Ys, and so we think nothing's writing to it. And here's where I always scream at them, take your hand off the mouse. Because we know this is changing somehow, and eventually that'll gravitate you to this base tag column, and there's where you would see it. Well, I did think Eric Carter brought up a really good point here, is you can use aliases to clear up something that has a, you know, a big array. Now, Really interestingly, Eric brought up this point, but I have absolutely never seen it done the way Eric's saying. And actually, I, I, I'm not sure. He gave me some food for thought here. I think this may be a perfectly good example of where I or um, messaging or aliasing could be a good thing because what he's saying is if you take like an IO link module such as any any of these over here, is you get a certain amount of data for each point. So maybe it's 50 points for port one, 50 for port two, 50 for port three. So you end up with a huge array of data. Now even here, Eric, I'm gonna say that this probably is a better use for an add-on instruction. Which is is what you mentioned here, and I think I think this is on the manufacturer to make a um, an add-on instruction for each port, even if it's a generic port. And actually, I'm going to highlight some IO link modules soon in a video that do this. But what he's saying here is, what if we had 496 single integers and we're trying to define them better? Well, I'm not going to create an IO link module. I'm just going to right-click controller tags, new tag. And I'm going to call this my generic array. And here we're going to hit the dialog box to the right of where it says dent. And I'm just going to make this 256. That's just an arbitrary number to talk this out. And we'll hit create. So now we have 256 generic points and we're trying to figure out what some of these items are. And I'm just going to say 27 is, you know, an IO block that has some points on it. So 
27.0, maybe that is our, you know, uh, I don't know, um, it's our home switch. So what I can do is I can right click new tag over here. And instead of having to go and find this, then I could type, we're going to call this bit in generic, oops, maybe spelled right. Probably not if you watch many of my videos, generic array. And I can go here and instead of having a base tag, I can drop down and get an alias and then direct to the NEFA and I can make it an alias for, I can open up that generic array. We can go down to 27 and then we can hit our arrow and we can get zero, create. And so now, instead of us having to go hunt and find, let me close that up, oops, hit the wrong button. So now instead of having to go find this, we would have, oh, well, let me close that one up too. I thought I closed all of them, but I didn't. We would have bit in a generic array. And you know, and even as I do this exercise, I, I would have to see what that would look like out in the field, but I kind of get the same feel, and I think it's going to leave some some vagueness to what it is. I'm not sure on that one. But I think, I think Eric, and Eric already hit on it at the beginning. I think in those situations, here's where the manufacturer ought to have an add-on instruction of some type to kind of map that data for us. But if they didn't have one, I think I'd still make my own add-on instruction before I made an alias. I don't know. But that here, and here's what's great about these posts is it always gives us good food for thought on both sides of these discussions. Nowhere in there did I say, don't use aliases, they're bad. But I think most of the arguments for aliases were a little short-sighted. And I think when you think about aliases, that's why I love what John said, is you know whenever you're writing a program, not just aliases, but you don't need to, th you need to think about how would someone else troubleshoot it? Or how would you troubleshoot someone else's program? If every time that you go into someone else's program, you're like, gosh, this was written just like mine, then I would be able to troubleshoot it. Chances are that's a problem with the way you're writing your program. Now, I do want you to try aliases. So go ahead and add an alias to your program and just see how it works and make your own decision on it.